Today, we will be covering the second UFO Mexican hearing that took place November 7th in the Chamber of Deputies in Mexico City. Like you, I have questions, and like you, I want answers. So we're going to get straight into it. Jimmy is in here today. He is out of town, so it's going to be you and I. And we're going to give a review, but also an, an analysis on what happened November 7th. But first, we're going to start off with a summary from the article by Reuters. And that article has been the only one that has been published. There have been other places like Yahoo and the Indian outlet NDTV that have copied Reuters and then have republished it as outlets do all the time. Um, but aside from that, it's not really being covered. So for those that are interested, for those that want to know what happened, and, and if you don't want to watch three and a half hours, I get it. I'm going to give you the key points on what happened during that during that hearing. Um, but one thing that I did actually want to mention before we start reading the summary is from the get-go, all of the speakers that went to the podium said, from my research, this is, these are authentic. All of these different bodies are authentic. They were not assembled by man. They are a thousand or more years old. And every single one of them said that because they probably saw what was happening in the news since September 12th when the first hearing was made public. And everyone saying, ah, fake, fake here, fake there, fake everywhere, alien cake. And, and I can get it. They, they look very strange. But these scientists and almost every single one of them that spoke has has doctor in their title, minus one or two. And they said, from my research, these things are authentic. Now, are they extraterrestrials? No, they're not. And we're going to get into that. But they are not saying that it's paper mache, that it's small human children, which is so sad to say to begin with, uh, or animal parts. These are authentic and it's it's one entity. And also on top of that, there were scientists that said, we invite you to conduct your own research. And that's when you open the doors like that, I think that adds a level of validity to the conversation because if you keep the doors closed and you say nope no one can look at it but me i am the golden child and only i can see it it seems a little sketch doesn't it but when you begin to open those doors very wide and they did this last time and they did it yet again for this second hearing they said if you want the data you can collect it if you want to conduct your own research you can and people are kind of avoiding that aspect and i think that should be spoken about of course, um, when we are having this conversation, those that watched the hearing, those that didn't, I get it if you didn't, people are making up their own minds so quickly saying it's fake or it's real. This was meant to, I think, provide a lot of extra data and fill in the gaps for people that had questions. But yet again, there are those that are so quick to dismiss it. I am not here to tell you to believe it or not. I'm only going to share with you the information that I found interesting and compelling and things that need to be spoken about. So I'm going to share my screen here merely as a visual aid. And we're going to start off with the overall summary of the hearing before we go into step by step on all of the people that spoke and then highlighting their main points in their speech and talking back and forth. You and I, those that are catching this live, will have a conversation here and see what things we found interesting versus others. So let's get into this. On Tuesday, November 7th, Mexico's Congress received a presentation from researchers who verified the authenticity authenticity of a set of three-fingered mummies found in Peru, which have been suggested as possible evidence of non-human life forms. However, they did not endorse the idea that these remains were of extraterrestrial origin. The initial presentation to lawmakers was made by Jaime Mausan, a Mexican journalist and self-proclaimed ufologist. Mausan proposed that the specimen, reportedly discovered near the Nazca lines in Peru, did not correspond to any known Known earthly life forms. In the latest section, as the first one was September 12th, Mauson aimed to demonstrate that the specimens 
which were not physically presented this time, were genuine, calling upon a series of medical professionals who confirmed that the remains were of actual once living beings while living while leaving their exact origins open to interpretation. And that's huge right there. Mausson expressed uh, his view that although scientific analysis did not conclusively prove any extraterrestrial origin, the findings could indicate non-terrestrial life forms. And then it goes into a little bit more detail that we're actually going to go into step by step on what certain people said and why they potentially said the things that they did. But first, we have the... Oh, well, I had it, but we have this this man right here, a legislative lawmaker by the name of Sergio Luna, and he was the one that, in a sense, conducted this hearing right next to Jaime Mausan, who was the one that probably prodded him to do so, and he was at the first one, and he was at this one as well, obviously, both of them, and so... The lawmaker Sergio Luna is saying, thank you for being here. This, this chamber of deputies, it's all about allowing the people to speak, to having an open mind and to share our opinions and ideas. And that's what he said in the last one. That's what he said in this one. And I like that he started off with that versus placing this level of criticism or this level of um, I'm better than you in some senses where what you're talking about is crazy and none of this is real and blah, blah, blah. When you have that level of bias, right? No one's going to listen to you except people that agree with that. Um, but when, when you are level-headed and you are attempting to show no bias, which all of us have and it shows all the time, even when we try not to, aside from that, he is saying, let's have a genuine conversation. Let's talk about this. And then Jaime goes in and he gives his little speech as well. And he thanks uh, the university in Inca, Peru, um, uh, where there was a lot of tests on the bodies that they were conducted there at that university. And we're actually going to talk about that the president of that university, and I'll give you that name in just a moment, also spoke during this hearing. And that was huge. And I emphasize that in the post commentary when we streamed the hearing live with English translations. If you want to watch that, that link will be in the description box below. But if you just want the, the quick summary, just keep on watching and listening to this one. So that was really interesting there. And it was because of that university that really helped allow scientists to come together and to conduct research and um, things that other universities maybe wouldn't be potentially as proud to express publicly, such as this particular one. And then he did mention that they were received from a mine in Cusco, Peru, and that oh, this is the crazy part. So back it up just a little bit. I don't want to get too ahead of myself here because a lot of information to cover in a short period of time. But in on his Twitter, he mentioned days before the hearing, I believe it was November 2nd, he says, there's going to be some really big surprises in this hearing. And for those that watched it, you might have rolled your eyes and been like, really? Although others might say, oh my gosh, yes, it was crazy, right? We all have our own opinions. But one thing that was shocking here is that in this meeting, in this hearing, excuse me, he mentioned that there are a bunch of other bodies. There's a bunch of other mummies in the same area and they're still looking for them and they found a few. And so that was really big. So we're not just seeing these really tiny ones. We're not just seeing Maria either, which is another mummy that's a lot bigger, but there's a bunch more. And uh, that I think that went over a lot of people's heads. But if you listen to it, you'll you'll catch it. And you'll be like, what? So we might get more information on that a little bit later. But he continues because he told the Mexican Congress hearing this. These aren't beings that were found from a UFO wreckage. They were found in algae mines and were later fossilized. That's just information for those that weren't aware of that. Now. I need to emphasize this immensely. These Nazca mummies are nothing new. These were found in 2017. There have been documentaries and talks about this, but for the most part, the research was kind of quiet. The information on finding these was made public. There were state uh, statements of those that found it. They were um, kind of like, what are they? They're not called treasure pirates, but treasure hunters kind of deal, something that they were fake. And Jaime 
and in a roundabout sense, address this in this three and a half hour hearing, which again is so long. And he says, him and a few others mention there might have been some fake ones mixed in with ones that are authentic. And of course, that's a very easy way to cover your tracks to make you look like, you know, more serious because there's a lot of controversy when it comes to mouse on where he had shown dolls and he said that they were real and they were not um i believe that was also in 2017 and so his credentials in many respects went down the drain after that but state mentioning this oh there was a mixture of the two yeah i i think it's a it's a catch-all and if it's true amazing if it's not yikes right of course so after that we get to hear from the first speaker and this is Jesus Angel Madrigal, and he is an air traffic controller in Mexico. And he must have been, I believe, the only per well, no, one him and the next person were the only two people that didn't really have a doctorate's degree or have doctor in their title. They weren't uh, a part of medicine in any way. But he, this is what was really cool. We, we saw this in the last one, and we're going to see it, and we saw it again in this one. And that was he was, in a sense, sharing um, his experience in a roundabout way. He didn't give a specific encounter that he had, but he had mentioned a lot of people in my field are encountering these really weird things. And Jaime says, how often is this happening? And he mentions here. In the year prior to 2023, maybe one or two reports a year after 2023 like this year alone it has skyrocketed exponentially we are getting reports all the time but then the questions continued and jaime uh, excuse me luna asks the legislative luna asks um well are these sightings being registered are they being written down are they being documented and this was a question that was asked last time and the exact same answer was given and that was no there are no reports there is no data people People aren't recording this. And later on, they said, well, this definitely needs to be recorded. Well, of course it does. That's a silly little statement to make, but it's also very true. It needs to be recorded. And it hasn't been even in 2023. During his time that he was speaking, Mr. Jesus here, they also sh shared an audio clip with air traffic control and a pilot. The translation was a little, a little icky. Uh, bless bless that lady's heart of being a translator is very difficult because you're not only translating in real time, but you also have to interpret. And those are two very different things. If you're reading a paper, you just have to read it. Easy. That's part of translation. But when you have to dissect someone's lingo in their language and then reapply the sentence in the correct sentence structure in a different language, it takes a lot more time than just a second to go ahead and repeat that. So those three translators, they did their absolute best. While it wasn't amazing for us English speakers, it's not an easy job to begin with. I've attempted to do Spanish translations before in the past uh, in real time. and honestly these people did amazing yes was it great no no it wasn't but they were able to get the point across so i have to give a, a big big applause for them and um it's they they got ripped they really did and, and they shouldn't have but back to this here um so there was audio recording that was shared but there was also three videos that were shared now here's the odd thing that i wasn't too fond of with those videos the main point was we weren't really given any information aside from the location and the year. That was it. There wasn't really any analysis on those videos. I think it was just kind of more of eye candy than anything else. And that might be like my biggest complaint about this hearing was just that little aspect of showing a video two, twice, three times maybe, and then going on to the next topic. I understand that time was limited, but I would have liked to seen a little bit more analysis other than just showing a video. One was in China in 2021. Another one was in Colombia, I believe in 2023 and then there was one more at an airport and that was all the information on the third one and i was like uh, i would have liked a little bit more but hey we we're getting somewhere we're getting somewhere and you know what that's what matters yeah moon at noon syntax and sentence structure like they mess you up when translating in real time it really really does so we need to cut them just a little bit of slack just cut those translators just a little bit of slack here it's really not easy now if they were given the scripts beforehand because all those all the speakers 
the majority of them stuck to what they wrote if the translators had gotten that that would have been ideal and maybe that will happen in the next one if we do receive another one but for those that were just talking off off the cuff that's where it was pretty difficult especially when you're dealing with different countries we saw mexico we saw peru and we saw argentina and then we saw a guy from france speaking spanish that was awesome they all have their different lingo their own their own slang, their own words that they use. And so these Mexican translators going from Spanish to English, that's another little aspect that probably wasn't anticipated either. So there is our first person. Now we're getting into the next one who also was not a doctor, but this is the last one that wasn't. And he was a lawyer from Peru. His name is Rafael Ramas. And I found his like choice of being a guest speaker really interesting. Why? Well, first of all, he didn't, and this is going to sound terrible, but he didn't have a lot, a lot to bring to the table. Yes, he was able to bring the law aspect, which is great. Yes, we need the law. We need to get more clearance and more information and stuff like this. But I don't know how it works in Mexico. In the United States, we've seen how that's been when it comes to clearance and laws and lawyers. It hasn't been that great. And it's a really big fight that you have to just keep on going with, right? In Mexico and Peru, I don't know. I think someone can tell me a little bit about it for those that live there. I would love to know. Please fill in the gaps of all of my questions. But aside from this, he mentions in his speech um, that there needs to be some legal loopholes for science. And I was like, heck yeah. Yes, Mr. Ramas, there you go. And But he also mentions that everyone that has been doing research, everyone that is at the panel today, they are very courageous. And uh, we are very lucky to have gotten this far to begin with. But he also mentions that there needs to be scientific research and law working hand in hand. It shouldn't just be one over the other. But with the levels of clearances and information being classified, that's where it gets very difficult. And then things can easily be stamped on as a national security threat, right? Which we, which, which we hear in the States all of the time. In Mexico, again, I don't know how it's like. I know someone here will give me the answer there. But I, I found his talking points interesting in the sense of like a one-on-one -on -one conversation. Was it appropriate for this hearing? It was okay. I thought it was a little bit more fluff, but once he finishes his speech, that's when we're getting into these scientists, these doctors showing the data, showing the research. And that's what so many people have been very, very hungry for. They were listening, and I think in many respects, they delivered in the sense of showing a presentation, showing their data. Now, was there paperwork behind this? I couldn't find any, and that's a little bit of a downfall, I think, for me. But will that, will that paperwork be made public at some point? Will it be peer-reviewed? I really, really hope so. It's going to be super beneficial for this entire conversation because there are people that mention, oh, this whole hearing is a joke, and it set us back. 10 years, 15 years, 20 years. Others are saying this is disclosure in the making. Thank you so much, Mexico. You are at the front lines of disclosure. You have these two camps. Which which side are you on? Let me know in the live chat. Let me know in the comments. I would love to hear your input on this, on what you thought about this hearing before we continue. Because depending on how your friends react, depending on how your environment reacts, depending on who you follow on social media, they're going to influence how you perceive things. That's just how our brains work. It's at the end of the day, at, at the very, very fundamental level is about survival. We want to survive, therefore we want to fit in. That's how we survive. So when we surround ourselves by people that are optimistic or pessimistic, it's going to reflect our own mindset as well. And so in the live chat, I was, I was watching it when I could yesterday, and you you had those that were like, yeah, and those that were saying, boo. <laughs> and then others were jumping on the bandwagon, agreeing with one person versus another. So here we have Ramas sharing all that fun stuff about law and science, which again is great, but I think a little bit of fluff here. And Mark Tasaka, thank you for that. If you are enjoying the commentary thus far and the analysis, hit that like button. It lets me know that you're enjoying the show and it tells YouTube, hey, we want more content like this. So now we're getting into the more factual aspect. And the first thing was we received a... 
I don't, I wouldn't call it an info video, but I'm going to call it an info video anyway of the, of the University of San Luis Gonzaga in Ica, Peru, talking about their findings on these mummies because they weren't just analyzing one, they were analyzing multiple and they were sharing their information on what they found. But at the end, they said, these are not extraterrestrial. Our, our, our conclusion is still inconclusive. We don't know what it is, but the invitation is open for those that want to conduct their own research. That was great. And I was like, yeah, we get visuals, we get some cool music, we get some cool narration. It, it kind of breaks up the monotony of people just speaking at a podium, which uh, can be difficult for a lot of people, not for everyone. But for a good majority, we need we need a little bit of pictures and a little bit of fun, just, just a touch. But this is about science. It's not about fun, is it? No, of course not. But now we're getting into, oh, here's more. There's another picture of the info video. This is Maria right here, which was a very big type of mummy. And there's been more research that was talked about it in the um, hearing that we're going to get into. And then these were the 11 scientists that signed the paper that signed their soul to this research. And they said, we researched this, This these bodies are authentic. We have conducted the best work that we can. And I just signed my soul, right? That, that's the kind of deal that I'm getting here. Can, when I tried zooming in, can I read any of these names? No, and I was very sad. This video uh, from, the, from the live, November 7th, it was being streamed from El Canal de Congreso, the uh, Congress channel, which was then being streamed by Jaime Maussan, who hired English translators to speak over those talking in Spanish. And so there was a little bit of lag and the quality wasn't fantastic, but even on the original channel, the quality wasn't amazing either. So we just got to deal with this. But here we have these 11 scientists and they signed their name on it. Is it, does that add validity to this conversation? What are you talking about scientists? It took many years to go through college and get that doctorate degree. Number one, it took a lot of money. Number two, number three, they're probably very passionate about it. Otherwise, you wouldn't have wasted 15, 20 years in school, if not more, because scientists never stop researching, right? They wouldn't classify it as a waste, but instead as nurturing their knowledge and their curiosity, right? Can you make money off of this? Sure, you sure can. Is is that the aspect here? I think there's a lot more controversy than there is money. And if you are placing your credentials on the line, your reputation on the line here, it's uh, it's going to ruin the rest of your life and your income if you aren't on the right side or if you don't actually work in what you believe in. So in some respects, some would suggest, yes, this adds validity. People signed. Could it have been faked? It sh sure, anything can, but why would it be? Especially when we're talking about a university, which the president of that university actually spoke and said, the university is open. If you want to do your research, you totally can. And I loved that. That was probably one of my highlights of that three and a half hour hearing. But now we are getting into this man. He is French, who's speaking Spanish, and who studied at this uh, that same university, San Luis University in Ica, Peru. His name is Tere Pere, I'm pretty sure. And he, as soon as he started, he said, are these real or fake? And he says, well, during my research, these things are authentic. He started back in 2017 when these mummies' bodies were just beginning to surface. People were getting an interest in them. The information was becoming public. And this is this is where it gets really, really cool, actually, because here he says, I actually wrote a letter to the Peruvian government to say, hey, you need to protect these bodies um, in case of treasure hunters. And I called them what I call them treasure pirates. That's hilarious. I'm so sorry. But he mentions that there are treasure hunters and the Peruvian government was like, nah, it's fine. And they didn't even address the issue. But here, this man said, this is legitimate. This needs to be protected. It needs to be kept safe while we conduct our research and that people don't mess with these bodies or mess with the other items that could potentially be in the graves, which 
funny enough, we haven't heard anything about that. We've only heard about bodies being found, but we haven't heard of any relics being found with them, to my knowledge. Now, could I be wrong? Someone correct me, please. But if you're going to correct me, provide the information or the link or whatever on how you received that answer. Because people tell me in the comments, because I try to read all the comments, I try my best. And they say, Christina, you're wrong. You're so dumb. How could you believe that? And I say, okay, if I'm wrong, that's fine. I don't mind being wrong. But tell me how you came to that conclusion. Why am I wrong? Please find the holes in my argument because that's going to make it better. It's going to make it stronger. It's about having that healthy debate. But when you point your finger and say, oh, you're wrong, you're dumb, it's it doesn't help anybody. Plus, one finger is pointing at you, right, the other person, but three fingers are pointing at yourself. I learned that from my math teacher in high school, and that, that one hit real hard. Also, he mentions here that uh, these bodies like the, the mini ones could potentially be reptilian and, or like have reptilian DNA in some respects. He talks about the eggs found in the bodies, which is very strange that people have mentioned could be rocks. And we're going to get into that as we continue on with our scientists as we continue. But he says here that none of the labs have talked about this entity um, in, in previous years, like 2017 onward. But in 2019, he had been con convinced to hand them over to the Ica University, the San Luis University, to let researchers make their own analysis. And that was probably the best thing that he could have done. Uh, because when you have real eyes in the sense of like expert eyes, it's going to help any argument, right? We always want to hear information from a doctor. If, if someone tells me that 9 out of 10 dentists recommend one certain toothpaste, I'll be like, dang, 9 out of 10 dentists? I'm in it to win it. Let's go. I want to make my teeth nice and white and strong. But if you say, oh, we'll see my neighbor over there who is not a dentist at all recommended this toothpaste, I'm going to be less inclined to listen to my friend's neighbor versus these nine unknown dentists. I don't know their background, but they have dentist in their title. Therefore, it's persuasive enough to tell me ah, I, they must be right. When in reality, they might not be all the time. But for the most part, we want to hear from experts, right? I, I, I saw that uh, ever since, what, September during all these hearings of, oh, the experts, oh, we need more eyes on this. And yes, 100% agree with you. We need the millions of eyeballs on this stuff, on the paperwork, on these bodies to give us some real good, dense information. But anyone these days can say, oh, I'm this and I'm that. I'm a doctor, I'm a therapist, I'm a scientist, and you can just you can just make it up if you really wanted to. But at some point, society will rip you up if they find you lying. So just don't lie to begin with, okay? Just don't do that. And with all of these speakers, uh, there were questions asked by Jaime and by lawmaker Luna to kind of, in a sense, fill in the gaps of their speech and provide people a little bit more sus uh, substance on their research and maybe some common questions. And that's something that I really like that we didn't see in the last one were these very quick questions between the speaker and the organizers. So I really like that aspect. But he says this, this Frenchman, Pierre says he can confirm that they are definitely not human. Okay. That was like the biggest aspect. And A3M, thank you. It says, I'm from Peru. You should start digging information starting from La Cleva de los Gentiles that uh, string open lots of doors. A minute. That sounds cool. And thank you for supporting the channel. I do appreciate that. Um, Richard says, can't understand why American scientists weren't involved. This is a valid question. And I think in... And I could be wrong here, so please correct me if I am wrong. You can correct me all the time. It doesn't bother me. But because this is a Latin American conversation, they were found in Peru, right? Maybe that could be an aspect to this. And then Mexico got their hands on it and started doing their research. And we had a lot of Latin American uh, countries looking into this, such as Peru, Argentina, Mexico, obviously, right? And I'm thinking about last time we also saw... 
Brazil, but I don't think he looked at it specifically. Um, we saw Japan as well. Um, but but it's a valid question. Why weren't Americans involved? Well, what if they were invited and they denied it? Is that a possibility? Sure, it could be. Would that information be made public? I don't think so. I think I think it'd be humiliating in both ways in the sense of, yes, I was invited and, and I didn't want to look at them because I thought they were fake and now I know that they're real or vice versa of I didn't want to taint my reputation, right? There could be all these aspects. And now do we actually know if they were invited or not? Not yet. We don't know. Don liking, liking my analogy right there. Thank you. <laughs> Well, Richard says it's a leading world in tech. That's why. Valid. Valid. It's, it's, it's a great question. And we need to ask the big guys about this. Why weren't American scientists and researchers involved? <laughs> Valid question. Uh, Broke Johnny Life, thank you, says, Christina, you are 100% correct in your assessment. It is my opinion that the disinformation campaign has gone on for 70 years and that's why people like to ridicule or do not believe this is something else that very briefly needs to be addressed because those that have other articles that have covered this have it be from september mainly from september they are using the terms little green men um painting the whole conversation as a hoax saying oh well these have been these have been classified as a hoax back in 2017, uh, but they never provide information on why they think that is. And so, yes, there is that that disinformation. There is that disbelief as well. But also for those that don't believe in this stuff and then all of a sudden get this information, they're going to be in a sense in denial as well. So the the human mind, it's very fragile and people that have preconceived ideas or confirmation bias, it's very, very hard to crack that shell and make them be a little bit more open-minded. Because this this entire hearing is was in some ways for certain people very difficult to sit through because they might not believe all the things that, that, that they heard. But if you are open-minded and you neither believe nor disbelieve, that's where Anything and everything gets a lot easier, not just in this conversation, but in life as a whole. When you are neither one nor the other, when you are neither right or wrong, yes or no, whatever, and you're following that middle path of just, I am just here to absorb the information, it's going to be beneficial throughout your entire life. But also very much here as well. So then the next person is, we get this Mexican singer slash rapper, Claudio Yarto, and I I don't really know why he was there. Bless him, okay? Uh, Jaime seemed to have very great things to say about him, saying that the things that are going to come out of his mouth are going to be very profound. And I was like, okay, sounds good, but maybe maybe it was lost in translation because I didn't see anything amazing. Um, if anything, I think for many people, it kind of just dropped the bar a little bit of credibility to, to, just to bring in this person this mexican singer that's all i have to say actually on that one and people said they, that he looked kind of like an alien as well getting into our next one now we're getting into the scientists now we're going really really big here and this is where it's getting really interesting where we're getting the meat and potatoes during this hearing and the first one is this guy right here david willie ruiz vela and i looked him up obviously because i had to look up all these people and fun fact about him is that he is a plastic surgeon and he does cosmetic surgery. Uh, and that's just a side note on, on what he does. But he also has a really, really big background, a very strong background in medicine, being a part of multiple different organizations and associations when it comes to medicine. So he's he's pretty hefty in that kind of stuff. And you can find it on his website. If you just literally type in that full name, you'll find it. And here he also says, are these real or fake? These are real. These are on these are authentic. It's impossible to have manufactured these based off of how they look and off the research that I've done. And as we continue on with these doctors, all of them say that. 
every single one of them. Are they all lying? Are they all doing it for the money, for the fame? Because if it's for the fame, they are ruining their reputation. And a lot of these people have very credible backgrounds and they are either doctors, they own their own businesses, they are professors at universities. It doesn't look good for them. If they were lying, could they? Sure, of course they could. But the big question is why? What's gonna be the benefit of that, right? And so here he mentions that um, the Ministry of Culture in Peru did take some uh, some mummies because there have been, there have been other ones, and they broke them and they didn't take care of them properly due to their lack of understanding and lack of equipment as well. But at this university, the San Luis University, it's a lot easier for them to give more precise collect more precise data and to take better care of them than those that I would place in this sense in the category of ignorant and just break them apart not knowing what they are or how valuable they are or what they are as a whole. But then we get into this guy and this one first of all and I mentioned this yesterday I love his last name Biotti it's such a it's it's Italian like it just sounds so good is it actually Italian I don't know but it sounds Italian he's an Argentinian scientist and he was one that broke out of this box of these are a thousand year old entities um they are non-human but we don't really know what they are he is bringing in some hefty words here and mr piotti is saying okay they could be us from the future and using scientific method because science has guided me here and i was like whoa Heck yes, continue. I'm all ears here. And he says, well, they could be us from the future. Now, I'm really glad that Jimmy made a statement yesterday in the post commentary is that he, we don't think he meant that they are like time travelers, but in the sense of they have the capabilities of being humans in a thousand, two thousand, ten thousand, a million years or so, right? And uh, so that was like, okay, whew, maybe like a little more calm, you know, like, whoa, bringing time travelers into this. Now it's getting crazy. First, it was just like a nice plain bowl of rice, a little bit of soy sauce, but now it's a curry. And after he explained that, Jimmy, I was like, okay. Whew. But on top of that, what he did mention, and his speech was very, very short. Um, I do have a timeline index on all the people that spoke in the initial hearing if you want to find that that link will be in the description box below and you can follow along with all people that spoke their name and a little bit and at the very least their title and so he says here that people that don't follow the scientific method are very dangerous to society those that just come up with an opinion with no foundation are ruining it for everyone else especially in today's world what we would classify as influencers the title says it all. They are going to influence you to think a certain way, buy a certain product, do a certain thing, right? People are very influential when they use the right words and they have, I would say, a big platform as well. But here he is saying, if you are not using the scientific method, you are a danger to society. And you know what? Yes. Heck Yes, opinions, while I value them, I think they are important. I want to hear what you guys have to think and what you think, right? If you speak to someone, anyone else, right, you're going to influence them and they're going to either conduct research or neglect it. And if they neglect it, then we're on a slower path to, at the end of the day, traveling through the stars. That's what this is all about. In, in, in many respects, not everyone's going to agree with me. And that's totally okay. You do not have to. I do not expect you to. This is not a dictatorship here. <laughs> I want you to have your own opinion. But when we have these conversations about extraterrestrials, about the unknown, the unexplained, right? When we open our minds and we open this box of the category of just strange and crazy and unexplained, it allows us to be more courageous and to do bigger and better things. And at some, we are a spacefaring species. At some point in time, we are going to travel the stars. We're not going to be on planet Earth forever for different reasons, of course. But if we can start off with understanding that there are extraterrestrials in our universe, that's going to be a step forward. If we are in this level of ignorance and say, nah, we're the only ones and or we are not a threat <laughs> as well, that's where it's going to get a little bit dangerous. So that's just my two cents there. Getting into our next one. 
this this guy was really highlighted in the Reuters um, article, and then everyone else that copied that article, right? They also highlighted him, which was great. He had some cool stuff, but also with Piotti, they all spelled his last name wrong, calling him Piotto, and I'm like, wait, hold on. I had to just relook just to make sure that I wasn't the one wrong. And you know what? First time. I'm not the best speller, to be fair. So now we're getting into Dr. Rogers Alvi, Alvies. And he, this, what he's holding right here is paperwork. And he says, I invite all academics and all researchers to conduct your own research on these bodies. And I was, I was applauding. I was like, heck. Yes, doctor, you are awesome. He is a university professor. You can also look him up online. You will find information on him. And he mentions that the skin is real. It is one body. It's not assembled. There are no ears. There's no hair. The eyes are too big for the face. The mouth is small and the nose is small. The body is thin and it has three digits on each hand and on each foot as well. But here's the crazy part about his particular research because all of them had their own expertise on what they were looking for, what other scientists wouldn't find in that same group. So in this case, and this was the new information, to my knowledge at the very least and that was a liver was found or at least kind of like the remnants of a liver therefore organs were found but there, there are no lungs with these entities and there's no ribs with these entities jaime mentioned that a, an, a, an animal that lives on earth that doesn't have a lung is a salamander they don't have lungs when they are first born living in the water um but they can they can grow lungs when they get on land it's not always the case, but in many cases, they are able to create lungs as they get older. Talking about salamanders. I had to look that up because I was like, whoa, Jaime, dropping in some cool information. Let me just check. And he was right. So here he says that um, Dr. Roger says, well, there are remnants of a liver. And if these were fake, if they were a doll, which... He talks about dolls a lot, thinking that originally that these mummies were dolls created, like they how a few were in 2017. They didn't believe it until he conducted his own research. And he said, nope, these are the real deal. These are authentic. And he says, if these were a doll and remnants of organs were found, they would have disintegrated over time. And it would have been impossible to have inserted organs in this doll and then fossilize them and all that all those crazy details and he says what well, we found this liver it was authentic that means that these bodies must have been as well of course there is room for interpretation there for those of my english speakers you just had to deal with the english translations that were dubbed over but for those that watched it in spanish directly from the channel of congress which they have a youtube channel as well you can find it it's solely in spanish you'll be able to kind of capture on the nuances just a little bit more there but he also mentions in his research that the eggs that were found in one of the bodies were not rocks they were eggs um and therefore they are biologics right because there's there's been a handful of complaints that people say that those eggs they are rocks are you crazy are you mad are you dumb right and he says no i'm none of those things they are eggs bada boom right very cool Oh, and on top of that, this is the crazy part. A fetus was also found. You can't fake a fetus. Mm -mm. You can't do that. So that was another little tidbit that blew a lot of people's minds. You're going to get some orange juice. Right? Got to get that vitamin C. Daniel says, fish don't have lungs either. The more you know. I never went fishing before, so I never, like, no, I have once, but I never, like, gutted a fish, so I don't know these things. I have a big fear of fishing that I'll just, like, swing it back and just take someone's eyeball when I fly the line, so that's my fear of fishing. <laughs> Side note there. <laughs> oh, fish have gills. Yes, that one I definitely know. Shenanigan says, I don't hear, I don't recall hearing about a fetus. Yeah, listen back to it. Uh, when you talk to... When you get into the aspect of Professor Roger Al Alvius, um, he talks about that. I think just very briefly. I think he just touches on it, but you have to listen to it in Spanish just to be safe. So now, because I don't, I don't make this like too crazy long, but there's just so much to cover. 
so here is a picture of the eggs found in the body. Okay, this is interesting. Um, now we're getting into the teeth aspect because there was a Peruvian researcher by the name of um, Edgar Martin Hernandez. And he was researching the dental work. Fun fact, he is a dentist. So he must have been the nine out of 10 dentists that recommend a certain toothpaste. But he was looking at the dental work in particular. And he, what he saw was just very strange that Maria in particular, the very big looking mummy, not the tiny ones, but the really big one, because we're looking at multiple mummies here. He says that the bones are very robust, but on top of that, she could have been a hybrid. And that's where we're getting to like the hybrid aspect um, of this, because that's where it's getting really cool, really interesting. And when we're taking out the word extraterrestrial in this conversation. So he's looking into this. He, you're seeing all the teeth. Um, and, and I think it's. Okay, so then here, this is the next guy, but this is this is kind of important here, because with Dr. Irving um, Zungia, Zungia, I believe, what's crazy is that these metal pieces were infused in the bone, and these um, were, like, infused in the jawbone, I believe, and so it was concluded by multiple scientists, one of them being Mr. Hernandez, another one being Irving, and then the next one being a criminologist by the name of Anushuka. They said that Maria, the big mummy, might have had a dentist. And now when we're looking at the carbon dating, this is from a thousand years ago. Dentists weren't a thing a thousand years ago. But on top of that, these levels, like this type of metal being osmium as like the main aspect of metal, have it be in the chest area or in the teeth. Um, it wasn't found until 1903. And so that was something that just really befuddled these scientists of how is this possible? And on top of that, these metal pieces, they, I think I said this already, but I'll say it again. They were infused into the bone. It wasn't just get a hammer and, and nail it in. Okay. It wasn't like that. It was, it looked too advanced to have happened a thousand years ago. And that's maybe why Mr. Piotti, the guy that says the Kabbalah from the future, maybe that's how he received that kind of conclusion because of this. Could I be wrong? Sure can. I don't see why not. But that's the information that we have thus far. And then we kind of have to make our own interpretations on a handful of things here until we receive more information. Evan says rare metal. Yes, osmium is, is a pretty rare metal. It's not extremely, extremely rare, um, but it is rare. And especially when you're dealing with fusing osmium with other metals, that was also captured people's attention because it, these metal things, um, objects were not just osmium. They were a bunch of other things as well. So that was pretty cool. Yeah, mercury fillings, says Eric. Could, yeah, for that time, yeah, I don't see why not. Very cool. Chris says, the human body would reject these implants. So then imagine, if, if we're going into the mindset a thousand years ago, how are they still stuck on her today, right? That's that's the weird thing here. And something that grabbed a lot of people's attention. But now we're getting into my favorite aspect, and that is talking to this older gentleman. He is the university president of San Luis um, Gonzaga University, Dr. Jorge Moreno. Yeah. And he opened the doors to the university and says, hey, if you want to investigate this, you can. The university and the institution is open. Come along and do your research. I love that. I also have a very special place for just people his age. OK, I, I just they're very sweet and tender and kind. And he seemed like that. So special place in my heart. But now we are getting into this lady right here, and she's the criminologist. Her name is right here, also part of the same uh, University of the Cusco, also in Peru. And she goes into pretty extensive details on the cranium aspect, on the jawline, and how just the head is, the cranium is just too big to be a human one. 
And uh, they believe that Maria, that big mummy, again, is about 30, 35 years old, give or take, that she potentially had a dentist based off of her filaments uh, or like the, the fake teeth, <laughs> I think that's the right word here, and, and the structure. But also that it's believed by these doctors and scientists that during that time frame, Maria used her teeth as a tool as well. So there's a lot of wear and tear there um, and deterioration. Also on top of that, Maria had TB, tuberculosis. And it was found in her bones. And I, I went ahead and I, I looked really quickly. Uh, can TB be passed to animals? And it can. It can be passed to primates and bovine and guinea pigs and a few other animals, but those are your main ones. That's going to be a little bit important in just a moment. So just remember that. But Maria had TB. So a little little extra detail there and this is just too many details in my opinion to fake to say oh no none of it's real <laughs> um it, it's just too much information it's just it's just i would get it if someone just came out of nowhere and said yeah these are aliens right uh the these are real and not provide any science i'll be like okay maybe not ideally true but when we're dealing with so many doctors and scientists providing so much information it's overwhelming, number one. But number two, it, it don't you think it adds a little more to this conversation? Let me know if you agree or disagree. Again, you do not need to agree with me. Please tell me why you do or you don't in the comments and in the live chat. So the next person that spoke, and this is also in the aspect where it gets really weird here, because at the beginning, when these mummies came forward in 2017, and then even in September of this month, of this year, excuse me, they said, it's it's ETs, extraterrestrials, it's aliens, what's going on here? We're being visited from a thousand years ago, this is crazy. But this whole hearing, it changes the, the dynamic, it changes the narrative altogether, and they're saying, mm, it's not ET, it's probably created here, it could be it could have been us from the future in some ways, but not as time travelers, um, but all the tech, like, all of the advancements that it has in the body, right? But then you have biologist Ricardo Rangel, who was also in the last hearing, if you remember him, but he provides new information. And he says, Maria, the other mummies, the other bodies? No, they could be hybrids. They could be hybrids with monkeys, such as apes. And that's where people were flipping they were flipping up. They said, what's going on here? What? <laughs> and then people at the same time were like, oh, well, if they're monkeys, then why are we having this conversation? Well, what he was mentioning here is that it was a sequence of different monkeys mixed with, I believe, Homo sapiens. In that aspect, I'm not 100% sure, but I believe so. And so when we're dealing with this mix, but also with the metals and the eggs as well we're dealing with all of these different aspects how how can we create a mural how can we create a puzzle with all of those aspects remember i said remember about tb tuberculosis primates can also get that in this case monkeys apes right but in in peru those primates are not prevalent there so how do they get there right that's another question altogether how did if if these if these were just monkeys, okay, just just regular monkeys, how did they get to Peru if they are not native there? And on top of that, why do they look so human in some ways? How do they have such big eyes and tiny mouths? Monkeys don't have that. Primates don't have that. They have big mouths, big eyes, big ears, big hands, long arms, short legs. We're not seeing that with these mummies. So that was something that blew a lot of people's minds and that dropped the ball for them. And then others kept on running with that ball. But, but let's just think about that just for a moment, okay? And just bear with me, please, just, just for a moment. Let's say they were monkey hybrids, monkey with human, okay? Let's just say for a second, let's just agree um, with biologist Ricardo Rangel here. If you've been following this topic, uh, have it be just UFOs, aliens, right? You might have thought at that point about the Anunnaki theory. And again, just 
just bear with me. You don't have to believe it. It doesn't matter. But let's just put everything on the table so we can have a thorough conversation. And so the theory that the Anunnaki created humans in modern interpretation of ancient Sumerian and Mesopotamian mythology, largely popularized, popularized by the late author Zachariah Sitchin. He's the one that kind of brought that theory to the public. And he says that based off of the work that he saw in the Sumerian texts, they were mentioned of the Anunnaki, these huge giants. Well, they're not huge, but they're taller than humans. And they were classified as gods to these Mesopotamians. And they were created to mind and harvest gold so that it could benefit the Anunnaki on their planet Nibiru. That's how the story goes, right? And if we, again, if we just take that theory for a moment and we apply it to Ricardo Rangel, you can see how the pieces could potentially fit where you are dealing with different experiments. Probably, again, if we're following this theory, the Anunnaki must have done a, had to do a lot of tests to create the right ones to do their evil bidding, right? If you just deal with a basic animal, you're not going to get that much done. Yes, they are super strong. They are brute. They can do the basics, but they can't think a few too many steps ahead. Right now, some monkeys, they are great with video games and they can play like basic chess, which truly blows my mind. But you have to kind of make this perfect concoction to get the work done, right? So I just found that weird in itself. But you can take it or leave it. It's up to you. It's just merely a theory that people have thought about, specifically Zachariah Sitchin. Those have agreed with it. Others have disagreed. I am not here to tell you one or the other. It's not my place. I am just adding information on the table, and then you can pick and choose what you want. I just think it needs to be addressed. I think, I think they can play basic chess. I know they can play ping pong, and they have good memory. I've seen those tests. And I want to say they can play chess, but it could also be checkers. I don't see why not. Chess is kind of hard, to be fair. Even I can barely play chess. <laughs> and so then we get into our last guy right here, Mr. Dr. Daniel. And his, sign, uh, his title is literally just scientist. That's what it says right here, scientist. And his... His speech was kind of short because he was the last one to speak. So he was kind of speeding through it on what he wanted to mention. He shows his x-ray of a person in, I believe it was the 70s or 80s that had three digits compared to the extra, this mummy thing that also has three fingers and seeing the comparisons of the two. That was the biggest takeaway from him. Um, but those are kind of like the biggest highlights from the hearing November 7th, 7th. And please, if I miss anything, let me know in the live chat, let me know in the comments, what aspects.